Support for today's episode comes from Dane Products a sexual wellness brand with a goal of closing the pleasure gap. I personally love the versatility of the products, guys. If it says it's a G-spot vibrator, you can use it on your clit or your nipples. It's so many options. And as a Boonie Breakdown listener, you can receive 10% off your purchase by using the code Boonie, all cap letters. Details on how to purchase can be found in the show notes and on the booniebreakdown.com. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Boonie, and you're listening to the Boonie Breakdown podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. All right, welcome to this week's episode, guys. We're back with another new episode. Um, This week, you know what? For season 10, I I came with an idea. I wanted to do something different. And so I'm calling them Boonie Breakdown All-Stars. These are some of our favorite guests, most memorable guests, and I'm bringing them back for season 10, something fun. And so this week, our guest is none other than Samaya of Sexual Essentials. Yes, you guys remember her from episode 124, How Come? This is a good one, guys. You want to stick around for the conversation. If you're not familiar with her, she is an intimacy coordinator. She is the founder of Sexual Essentials. She's a hands-on sexual educator. She has a pop-in Patreon for you to learn all of the things, dick riding, mouth sucking, uh, how to squirt, anything you can think of. I'm pretty sure she has a class and a course over on her Patreon. So you want to stick around for this conversation. Um, this one, we really talk more about the orgasm gap, uh, sexuality, some sex myths, sex toys. Like, it's just so good. It might be a little longer than a normal episode for us guys, but you're going to want to listen to all of the information and stick around for that conversation. All right, let's hop right into my pick of the week. All right, I don't think I formally did this on the episode because we were out of season, but I definitely have to shout out the Ratcheteers over in Kenya for at least two to three months now. We have been charting on the Apple Podcast charts over in Kenya, which is so fucking dope. Um, So shout out to everyone over in Kenya who is listening. I appreciate you guys. Keep going. Keep the boonie breakdown on the charts over there. How dope would that be to be do a live show over there? Right? Uh, but I appreciate the support. I appreciate all the downloads. And you keeping your girl uh, on the charts over there. So if you are listening in Kenya, I would love to um, for you guys to like send me an email or DM me on Instagram. You can email me at thebooniebreakdown at gmail.com. But I'm just really curious like what if it's a particular episode or what it is, um, what did you like about the Boonie Breakdown? I would love to know and can't wait to hear your feedback. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. All right. We're hopping right into housekeeping. It was so much good feedback from our season opener, our episode with Brian. Uh, (laughs) I knew that the only person who could set off season 10 on the right ratchet note was our problematic fave, Brian. Even though someone sent in this message and said, oh my God, Boonie, I'm actually shocked. I think I was more like (gasps) at your commentary in this episode than Brian is therapy really working on Brian (laughs) so it sounds like therapy really is working for our problematic fave but if you have not gone and listened to episode 184 the streets be talking uh head on over it was also interesting I did a poll and on talk to Boonie Tuesday because I was very curious about if you guys really did believe that the streets is right and I was so shocked that the majority, I mean, it was a majority, but most people do not think that the streets be right. I do. I still stand by my statement that the streets, if, if the word on the street is the word on the street, then the word on the street is true. I will stand by that, <laughs> whether you guys agree with it or not. But I think the odds are 53% of the people who answered that poll said that the word on the street is generally true 90 to 100% of the time. Also in this uh, past week's poll because in the episode we talked about the underdog sex and so I asked it ugly were ugly people better from better at sex and 57 percent of you guys said no no nope but ugly people be fucking don't be thinking out here just because they ugly they not fucking they do be fucking um so thank you guys for listening to episode 184 if you have not yet still go back it's your first time listening go back and check us out we'd be ratchet we'd be funny all the time All right, now is the time that we plug Patreon. I do want to thank so many of you guys for signing up 
to uh, support our Patreon last month. We have a good old time. We have our group chat. We have monthly live events. Um, and it's fun. Depending on the level, you get different benefits. So here are the shout outs for this month. Shout out to Karen, Miss Kern. <laughs> shout out to Sharice P. Shout out to Vanessa V. Shout out to Shaquila. Shout out to Tamika. Shout out to Stasia Epp. Shout out to Addison F and shout out to Lania O. So thank you guys all for joining Patreon gang. Um, if you would like to join, you can join at patreon.com backslash the boonie breakdown. It's three, six or $15 a month, depending on whatever benefits you want to get out of it. So that is how you can do that. Also, if you're not following us on social media, please be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Boonie Breakdown. You can follow us on Twitter just at Boonie Breakdown. And when sharing this episode, if you want to put it in your fucking Insta stories, if you want to tweet it out, you want to put it on Facebook, you want to put it on TikTok, please be sure to tag us. You can use the hashtag The Boonie Breakdown. You can use the hashtag pod and P-O-D-I-N. All right. Instagram is pissing me off because they're making it very hard for some users to share content. It's not as easy as hitting a little airplane anymore as like six steps, which is fucking ridiculous. I fucking hate Instagram sometimes. But if you can screenshot or make your own content or take a screenshot or screen recording of you listening to the episode, you can always share that to your Insta story very easy, very quickly. And I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you long time. All right, guys. So that is it for me. So let's get ready to break it down. guys it's your girl boonie and i am excited for this episode uh throughout season 10 we'll be bringing back some of my i'm calling them boonie all-stars these are people who've been on the podcast before and they've killed it so i had to have them back in season 10 so we have to welcome our boo so mia hey. of sexual essentials hey girl <laughs> Bye. what does your Hi, shirt guys. say um meditation uh, oh, meditate, manifest, and masturbate. Is this your shirt? Do you sell this? No, uh, but my uh-huh. shirt, I the, the shirt I have, I need to wear it for an interview tomorrow. So I was like, I'll just wear this because it says masturbate and then have my art exhibit cup. So, you know, I still, you know, promote my shit. I love it. Come on, promote you know. your shit. Yeah. So look, since the last time you were on here, that was in February of 2020. I feel like you've been Damn, everywhere. So Watching you blow up has been dope. You've been doing it. You've been killing it. Like, go, sis, go. It's been awesome. Ah, you making me blush. You know, I joke to myself because I always feel like I be scouting people right before they pop. So it's a few <laughs> people, right, that I feel like I've had on. And then right afterwards, it's like, I'm like, see, I be knowing. You <laughs> see, you be knowing. You be seeing it. Look here. All I know is I was like, uh, somebody, let me check my email. And I'm like, okay, here Booney is. I know you probably, and I was like, she probably going to DM me. I think I saw it right after you sent it. And I was like, let me just blow her mind and just accept this shit. Just off the strength of this Booney. What you mean? And you and did. I was like, and I I'm, I'm dealing did. with you all late. You like, I already responded. I Look. got my spot. What's up? <laughs> yes, I am happy to be back. Hey, y'all. My name is Samaya. I'm the owner of Sexual Essentials. Yes. What's up? <laughs> So look, I feel like I was just tell- sharing with you some personal stuff. They had my budget on lock. I can't wait to get up in your Patreon gang. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you back on here, because I feel like you've done such a good job with branding sexual education. And I really appreciate that. I, appreciate I feel that. like you've made it in a way that it's not threatening for people or they don't feel like. It was, it was like I feel like it's still that taboo around sex that all of us in this space are trying to break and knock down yeah. that wall. But I feel like you're doing a really good job with your platform and doing that. Thank you. I feel like honestly, I feel like it's so successful because I have no boundaries. Like as far as how I come off to people, I've already accepted the craziest shit about me. And there's nothing that I can do that anybody else can do or say to embarrass me. You know what I'm saying? And I've also learned there is not one person going through something that's unique. It's Facts. all happened before. And so the end of the, the, what I found is that nobody's saying shit. And that's why we still going through it over and over and over again. And it's like, when it, when I named it sexual essentials, there were so many people that were like, you know, you could do something more pop, more this, you know, like 
a little more flashy. And I was like, no, like yeah, when like I think about the essentials, yeah. <laughs> when I, like, like people be like, you've had therapists on your Patreon. You've had, you know, deep throat class. Yes, I have all of it because from A to Z, it all matters in making a good sex life. The essentials of sex have to do with you being a well-rounded person. Like that's how you have really good sex that like, Legit. And so, like, we got workout classes on there. We got pussy popping class. We got <laughs> class on there how to take nudes, how to give a dick massage. Like, stuff. Because I think I before, I think it was on your Insta story. It had to be on Insta story. <laughs> I heard you saying it blew my mind. And I was like, mm, I can't wait till I buy this damn house so I can get my budget back. And you said there were like 20 different ways you could jerk a dick off. Yes. And I'm like, yes. I feel like I only know four. <laughs> and most people honestly just do that good one. Y'all hear that sound in there? Y'all hear that in y'all ear? That's me jacking it as hard as y'all be doing it that one way. And it's tired. Like I have classes on there for like, even for women, a lot of women masturbate in the exact same way as well. They just lay back and they, they hit this good old thing. Look, just I- from... I be telling okay. people you best switch it up when you do it to do it to yourself too on the floor yes. in the shower, literally I, on something. <laughs> when I anytime I stand up and masturbate, just stand up, like not squat, not like just stand up. I squirt every single time, like every single time. I don't do no extra tricks. I literally just stand up, part my legs a little bit. You know what I'm saying? When you part them too much, it's like oh, come in there. And you part a little <laughs> bit, you can't get in there. So it's like in the middle, just right, and every time, and it's like. Damn. Who no? Yeah, Who I just no? I do. I do think you're right, women. Either either if they don't lean back, then they are on their stomach with a little DJ scratch scratch booth happening <laughs> on the clip, right? So, but I do I do feel like you know, people aren't willing to to expand the boundaries. Like this is exact your sex life is anything you want it to be. And I think people are just they get their rhythm. This is what I like to twist on the nipple or lick here and then we're inserting a dick into a penis if it's you mean a dick into a penis a dick into a (laughs) pussy (laughs) like if it's a heterosexual relationship right like you got your rhythm this is what we do and but everybody has their go-to fact yeah honestly we're so tired though like we are so mentally exhausted with life that sometimes because also it's comforting to have a mm-hmm. go-to with a go-to person and have go-to moves. Like that's also something Facts. that slept on. Like one of these classes I did on my Patreon was that vanilla sex is not boring sex. Like mm. vanilla sex can be passionate. It could be, you know, exactly what I like. Like it's like, damn you in my head. Like you knew exactly what I wanted next. Da, 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 da. If you're having bad sex, you're just having bad sex. If you're having boring sex, cause you're having boring sex. It has nothing to do with the fact you're doing the same thing over and over again. The point is, is that when you're ready to do something different, are you opening that door for that? Or do you have it like, no, I'm only going to do this. You see what I'm saying? But we have lives. We got kids. Well, I got a kid. We got jobs. We traveling, COVID, like mental health, like food, exercise, like eating right. Like it's so much, so much to balance trying to be a fucking adult. By the time you get in the bedroom, you like sometimes it's nice to have that go to. But I tell people all the time, I'm your sex best friend and I'm going to spike your interest to a point that it's like damn okay let me like make time for this because it's like you follow like say you like shopping you probably fa- follow fashion over you get their emails when something new coming along you didn't remember to go shopping they emailed <laughs> you and was like and oh shit ass. yep <laughs> exactly now you sucked in and you're like oh yeah i ain't buy myself nothing nice in a while i mean that's why we get on these auto subscriptions with with uh the lingerie, right? To remind you to do this for yourself. Well, guess what? What are you investing in your sex life? Do you invest any money in your sex life or do you just and I need, wait for I need, it to, you know, show up? Like, I need everyone to like, you're listening to this like, oh, it's going to be a boring <laughs> webinar. And no, I'm telling you, I can't wait to do, this is my own reminder to myself to sign up for the Patreon because I, I, <laughs> it's literally I had it ready. Uh, as soon as I closed, I was like. 150 I, classes on there and we added more like. But she does demos y'all. Week. Like, cause I be wanting Ooh, to see. You heard about the live demo? Yeah, I, I heard about oh, the, the demo live, from the somebody demo. who was on there. <laughs> <laughs> and she and, and you know i was the person who did it was not like oh she's like i can share the link i was like oh don't do that because i know oh. how uh as a content <laughs> creator myself i would be i would have sent it to you boom. you should have been but, but, you know i'm gonna pay my coins oh. too but i just was like yeah she did a demo 
Like, I'm like, I need to be at these demos. Like, I'm- <laughs> So for the people listening, let me tell y'all what happened at this demo. So y'all know I teach these classes on Patreon and stuff like that. But I was like, you know what? Let me show them how this works because people learn in different ways. And some people are like, well, that's porn. Well, I don't really give a fuck. Like, just because a dick or a pussy out don't mean that it's porn. Because I go to the gynecologist and guess what? I don't feel turned on. It don't feel Hello. like porn to me. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, Hello, somebody. <laughs> so I asked for volunteers and I wanted to demonstrate on an actual person how to actually perform some of the stuff that I teach on my Patreon. Because some people are like, well, it didn't work out for me. And I'm like, okay, y'all. It's not perfect immediately yeah. all the time. Like I'll show, like I, I just like it took an hour for like each girl. The first girl had never had an orgasm before. She wow. left with, she left with three. Um, yeah, I've been like, what's your number? <laughs> And, I see you tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't even ask her for her name. I was like, "Yeah, it's no face, no case." Like, I gave them a mask to put on so they like, nice. you know, was covered. Um, the second girl was not so fortunate because I was doing a edging demonstration on her orgasm denial. Um, I felt so sorry for her, and then I was like, "Okay, you can come now." But by the time I had tortured her so much, so much time had went by. She. Yeah, she left out of there like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, but they watched it on camera. It was crazy. So I had a professional videographer come in and watch me masturbate on these women and teach people how to use these toys, how to do different techniques, how different toys work, um, how to do them on different types of, you know, clitorises Mm -hmm. and vulvas and stuff. And so they really got to see. And they was like, yo, this was the most funniest educational thing I've ever seen. But yet it was still kind of hot. You know, both the girls, they had nice bodies. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was legit. And it was just like, I just, I wasn't phased. I was just so happy to show people, like, see, it works. Like, and I don't even know these girls from a can of paint. Wow. Like, I was going to just about to ask you. You know, what I'm, I didn't know them. No, they knew. literally volunteered. Mm-mm. That's kind of dope. Everything was anonymous. And it was just like, because I don't want people to think like, because porn is, is acted out. You know, like mm-hmm. there's still parts that are put together. Sure I wanted them to see it in the natural that like th- this is what you get. I, I'm trying just like y'all. Like, So I, I have a follow-up question. Did you follow up with the girl who never had an orgasm and had three? Is she able mm-hmm. now to, or you just don't know? Like, it's just mm-hmm. like. I, I li- Because I told them, I said, I want you to be able to volunteer so anonymously. Dope. So I didn't even, I used their numbers. I deleted them. I didn't even save them. I did not say, hey, please don't think that I'm rude. I'm not using your name at all because it's not necessary. That's you know amazing. what I'm saying? Like. You know what I mean? I just, I wanted them to feel comfortable. I bought them champagne, strawberries, let them order room service. I got Come a nice ass mood. room. Oh, I said the fuck, bitch. I said the mood. Set the mood. <laughs> hey, niggas, pay attention. You know what I'm saying? If I take your bitch. Uh, but <laughs> I, I set that mood, okay? All right. You know, I set so- that mood. I gave them a gift afterwards. You know, I was just like, thank you so much for donating your pussy to science. Like, you know, <laughs> all the <this> things. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The world oh, that you. is hilarious. <laughs> that is fucking hilarious. What what's your yeah. favorite sex toy out right now that you're using right now? I I sound so boring, but my, my go-to is the Satisfier Pro, um, the Traveler Pro, Clitor Stimulator. It is my go-to. It I don't think it's the best toy I've ever used in my life, but it but is it's your my, favorite. It's my favorite and my go-to because you can use it any like you can use it when you don't have a lot of privacy or like when you need something quick, but also you can add it to a situation and really spice that motherfucker up too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, it could get nasty with it, but it's so adaptable, like because it's the travel size. So like I have two on my website, one is regular size and one is the travel one. My favorite one is the travel one. Like I literally have taken it in my purse. I've used it in the airport bathroom. Like, uh, you gotta, you know, TSA really be stressing the child. I just be happy. Yeah, TSA you know, like, is stressful. I'm, I'm gonna say right now, um, it's funny because I was in flux in between my moves, and I was staying with someone, and I didn't bring sex toys with me. Like I just had them packed away, and I missed them. And so when I <laughs> when I got sure. my That's things back, get. That's what you get. Yeah, when Why I got you my things away, I don't know. It was the away. worst. Is I brought like the little cute like little cup like vibrator just if in case of emergency during those mm-hmm. trying times um but yeah my favorite right now i still gotta say i am rocking with the rose a little bit right now oh my goodness um so... and it's not a suction like it really just is a i try to tell this to people it's just because it's little it's easy to move maneuver um that's real but, but my all-time favorite is still the magic wand i like 
what? That's still my all time. That's because that motherfucker's so goddamn strong. Yeah. Like, <laughs> see, that's you- the, so. And I don't right. use it often because it is so powerful that it's. Yeah. Yeah, that was like what I went to because I'd missed them for three months, right? So it was like, oh, I missed yes. you. And, and I haven't so used it since weird. because it is a lot. It, okay, so, okay, I have some, some comments. So about the rose, my, my, I have a black toy vendor, Erotic Boudoir. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've had her on the show, but you definitely should. She's great. No, um, right. I will connect you guys. But she does not, so she does not, pick up every toy that's dropped for a while. You know, you could only get the rose on Amazon Mm -hmm. because it was not backed by any major toy companies, which means there's probably a defect or something they want them to change or something about it. That's not really top notch quality. And so just because a toy can make you come does not mean it's necessarily one that I would invest in necessarily. Um, But they changed some things, a big toy manufacturer picked it up. And so then she started offering it. She sent it to me. It got me off. It was cute. You know what I mean? Like, it was cute, but I will say the whole part for your clit to be on it because it's an air. It's it's air stimulation. It's really small. Small, yeah. It's really small, small. and I got an extra large coochie. So, so I I did tell somebody I prefer. I do like it more on the nipple, honestly, because mm, that makes sense. Yeah, because it's like perfect for. <laughs> but yeah, Hell, if you do have a big clit too. I got if you, I got. If you got, I got a big clit, you shit out of luck. Yeah, so that's another reason I like the satisfier because the hole is bigger. So like, okay. even if you have a small clit, like it still adjusts well. Like, no money is wasted, you know. And that's one thing. Like, when you ask a lot of not to be funny, but a lot of black people how they feel about toys, they're like, "Oh, I bought this one toy and it ain't work, so I don't like doing that." You bought that one toy in '95. You have not <laughs> tried since then. It's a lot of new shit out there, and you it probably only tried it stuff. once. Like, what's that? Who learns shit on the first try? But yeah, it's, it is a lot of things. There is a toy. It's called the Womanizer Duo. I got oh, one. Oh, I went with the, and the suction and the. It has the suction and it has, it's almost like, y'all remember when, when, what, Kathy's dog or whatever, what the fuck was that shit called back in the day? Uh, yeah, I think it was Kathy, on the one that dog. was on Amazon some, that went some, viral. Some dog, whatever toy. Tracy's dog. dog. Tracy's dog. My bad. Tracy's dog. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's dog. <laughs> Just okay. So. Basically, it has the dildo part and it has a clitoral stimulation part, right? Mm-hmm. Well, then they started coming out with these toys that had the clitoral stimulator part, where it's like the air suction for the clit and then the dildo part. But it's like, it made me feel like something was wrong with my booty hole and my coochie and my clit because it was like, if I put the dildo part in, it never reached my clit. It was like, why oh. it don't fit? Or if you put the suction part on your clit, you it don't go the- it. Yes. So then they made the Womanizer Duo and it's curved. So that way it can get in you. And then the way that it like, it's, it's, it seemed like a woman designed this thing. Okay. I don't Probably know. is what happened. <laughs> I don't know, but I know that she ain't missed. Okay. You put that toy in and it's so soothing and so light. This is the thing. I get why you like the wand. Cause you know what? It gets you where you need to go I know. quickly. It- yeah. And and you know and forceful too, right? It's no fuss. I know I'm gonna make a mess and be it's, delighted in about ninety seconds. <laughs> boom. And and that and that is fine. But I promise you, orgasms are like snowballs. And so, the longer, the, the more you give it time to like this pick up true. speed, pick up size, momentum, all that shit. Like it creates a full body orgasm. You know what I'm this saying? This is so true. We want deeper orgasms when you it's almost like like it's like an orange like you peel that first layer like you know how, like you see kids like bite fruit you know what i'm saying <laughs> if they bite an apple you might as well throw the apple away it's too thin right but if they bite an orange it might only get through that skin and in the orange part is still okay when you don't masturbate with like slower like if you don't let your orgasm go slower you kind of like an apple you did it and it's over like all right, that's all you get. But when you have a deeper edging, slower orgasm, you get to feel it everywhere. You get more out of it. So it's like taking a bite out of an orange. You got, you still got more left when you edge and go slower. But it's, it's literally torturous. But we it don't is. know how to sit in pleasure. We don't know how to feel pleasure. So when we feel know. pleasure, we're ready for orgasm. Just like when men have their hard dicks, they ready to just put it in pussy. Women ain't no better. 
As soon as we feel like we about to nut, we let that motherfucking t- we start turning that toy up. Like, oh, okay, there it is. And then we go straight for it. We don't walk down that yellow brick road looking at the daisies <laughs> and shit. We just like, oh, oh orgasm. Sometimes. Boom. Like, that's exactly where we show up at. Like, we just as bad as men. We don't know how to sit and feel pleasure. So you know? I did this one day during the pandemic. It was, I had treated yeah, myself. Time. Yeah, I treated <laughs> myself. I got a like nice shower. I lotioned and lathered Ooh. down, put on my little silk robe. Ooh. And then I was just laying in the bed with my silk robe. And then I was like, you know what? Turn on some music. Light a candle. Ooh. I set the motherfucking what you for do? myself. But myself. And then I I grabbed, I didn't start with a toy, right? Because Let's see what the hands do. We did the hands. I think I was like, it was work. probably the longest because it was nothing else to do. And I didn't have anybody to come over that day. So it was the longest <laughs> or like time I sat with masturbation with myself. Because to your point, sometimes if I just need five minutes, just to, uh, all right, I just need to go to sleep. Goodbye. Like, good night. Yeah. And sometimes I got a little longer, let the beat build a bit. This day, I, I mean, it had to be like two and a half hours. It was fucking amazing. That it's sounds beautiful. When I tell you, I, I legit, it's been so long since I've had that type of time. And that's something I'm really missing. I think I'm actually going to do a masturbation challenge for September for the following and everything. Because I don't think people realize this is why our orgasms lose um, strength. Mm-hmm. Because you, if you always do that go-to quick nut, you're losing strength in your orgasm. You're losing strength in your pelvic muscles. And for me... Um, one of the things I need to hold myself more accountable for is doing yoni massages. So that was a class I had put on my Patreon. It's a three-part class, but people don't realize it's not just for your partner to do to you. You can do it to yourself. Mm-hmm. And because just like just like men, we only know usually know how to use our fingers in one way as well. And I think people think that when you're masturbating or doing anything sexual, the only purpose is to orgasm. But that journey is really what changes it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when people... Okay, like not to knock anybody that has certifications or anything, but it's very different when you're in a six week certification process for something and when you're in an 18 month or a four year or, you know what I'm saying? It lets you know the extensiveness of what you're about to get, right? Or the extensiveness of what it can behold. And and your orgasm is like that. Like your orgasm can be a a four year and then add that PhD. (laughs) It can be, or you can be that quick shooter and it's like, oh, I did my my class in 24 hours. See, I got like, which you know what I'm saying? If I say, oh, I went to school for this for 18 months and they're like, man, I just did that online. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just did it. Which one you gonna want? You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's it's like that with our orgasms too. And so I know I have really been trying to get back into it. But like my, you know, just like you said, like life circumstances life, change and sometimes yeah. you get really busy. And so I feel like a lot of people have disconnected. Outside been open. We've been around people and all that alone time we were getting in like through COVID, like I miss it. I don't, I don't necessarily want it back, but I do miss it because I was in control of like my life having a routine and playing with my pussy at 9 a.m. noon and 9 p.m. You know what I'm saying? I I miss these things. I am committed. Like I was ranting about this this morning on my Patreon bonus episode that like it's parts of the pandemic that were so it highlighted so many places where I don't want my life to go back to the way things were. So it's some yeah. things where it's like, I so those moments where it was slow, I feel like everybody's in such a rush to get back to the way things were that it's like, fuck, we're about to lose that, that little pockets of slowness that we can have. And so when I think about those moments where, Oh my God, I could never in my adult life, Take two hours to three hours to just masturbate and not feel guilty about it. Like, yeah. do I need to schedule that? How do I still make time for that? And, <laughs> and Booney, my- you don't even have kids yet, do you? No. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, imagine, like, if you think that you don't have time now. Yeah, I don't know how people imagine. Do anything. <laughs> first of all, I don't know how I do anything either. Yeah, I okay. Don't know how y'all so do it. I, I am that person. I, I have a business. I have a and child. You travel I, and... I do. <laughs> but that shows you how good the journey could be. If I'm making time to do this, that's mm-hmm. how you like people ain't doing that shit. Just they doing it because it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how are you making time? Because I've been on the other side and I'm like, oh, shit, you got me sold. Like, I'm hooked. I ain't got no choice but to make time for it. You know what I'm saying? So 
in the midst of planning this art exhibit and all this other shit, like that's Look. one thing I miss. Like I'm so like I'm excited for the art exhibit. Don't get me wrong. But it's after work. it's over, I'm going to fuck myself into a coma. <laughs> okay? Like Look, I I, I need some time. I don't realize with me. how much work it is putting on an event. And certain <laughs> events require more time. <laughs> More energy, more effort, more upfront money. All, all of these things, you know, all are a dream. So you mentioned your event. So by the time this airs, your event in Atlanta already happened. I'm already putting in a plug for the D. I, I will include DC because I know I'll travel to DC if you come to DC. I'm not going to be able to make the one in Atlanta, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, where, 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 where are we going next, sis? I don't know where we're going next. I, I don't know. So, y'all, the art exhibit is a live sex show that I'm putting on. It's not a sex party. You're supposed to come dressed up, dolled up, masquerade, after five. I'm talking about gowns, suits, fag. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be dolled the fuck up. But I've paid, like, some of the best sex workers out there to come and perform as we walk around legit like some Romans drinking our drinks. Like watching it. them you know what i'm saying like it's live music like literally we have princes rest in peace saxophonists doing a live show we have king hef um jess and jasmine king noir sir marvin right there i mean if okay you're not... any of them could have headlined their own show by the yeah way. i'm like right there you know what i'm saying like we got all them there we got cigar rollers hookah open bar like it's literally an upscale of it. it's what it's what I need. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we deserve luxury. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And what I want people to understand is that pussy ain't cheap. And so if I'm Say it again, pussy, please. <laughs> pussy is not cheap. And good dick ain't cheap either. You know no. what I'm saying? So so we 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 pay these sex workers. They're there to put on a magnificent show while you get to walk around and stare and watch and be hidden behind your mask at this masquerade. And we all dress up and we live open bar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some great Gatsby type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with it's it. It's been so long since we've dressed up. You know what I mean? It's like we wait for New Year's to get fancy. I was just in my mind about to say that. That's a, actually a bomb New Year's night. <laughs> yes. I think that would have been amazing New Year's night. But I'm just, the way COVID and it's Delta I know. I was, shit, liter- just like, mm. I was literally just look, starting to look at events again, um, venues again to maybe do a live show. And now I'm like, the dates I was looking for, I'm just like, I don't want to take the risk. I ain't going to take the risk just yet. So we'll see how this pans out. But I'm trying to lose no more. Mm -mm. mm -mm. So you Mm -hmm. mentioned a little earlier in the conversation about um, uh, we were talking about um, learning and keeping your skill set sharp and and not falling (laughs) just because. Uh, you know, you're doing the same thing over and over again does not mean that is bad sex. And I, I liked that point of advice um, because I do think sometimes when we think about sex and exploration, it's always about trying new things, try, like trying yeah. something new, right? And so, yeah, you want to keep the spark alive. A master alive. of all things is a master of nothing. <laughs> yeah, like, look, like you said, look, I definitely have finishing moves in a few little, you know, yeah. you got to have your finishing moves and the thing you notice I know that I got this shit right. And part, I think part of the game with good sex and the people I've had amazing sex with, the one thing that was always consistent because they all have very different styles. And I've talked about this before in here, my Mount Rushmore of dicks, those are my top four. Um, mm-hmm. They all were confident as fuck, right? Mm. And I felt like that's the big, like if you feel like I know I'm, I know what, I'm putting this shit down, but you... <laughs> You actually do have the skill with it. You just, it's just not braggadocious with nothing backing it up. Okay. That I do think it makes the sex a little bit better. And for you, for your classes, I'm just curious like, do you have straight men who are attend or purchase any of your workshops or attend your workshops? Absolutely. Like the men um, reviews are my favorite because men have no, what's the word, coos. Like, they just be like, <laughs> I got a review one day that said, hey, I thought this was porn on your Patreon, but it's not. But I, he said, he said, I bought this because I wanted to masturbate. He said, I logged it. Let me find a damn review, girl. When I tell you. <laughs> I, like he's like, this I, is I trickery. Was, I was trying to get a nut. <laughs> he, thought, he thought my Patreon, which is a learning platform, 
is for porn. He said, hey, no lie, you're good at this because I was ready to masturbate, but I accidentally clicked on one of your videos and I learned some things. I ain't even masturbate. I said, oh, she's really good. Very informative. <laughs> I love it. And honestly, when men are ready to learn that, you know how you say you love confidence? I love men that are willing to learn. Like, I think people... I think people make a lot of assumptions about Samaya, sexual essentials, and what I like. I can I... only imagine because of the assumptions that I get about <laughs> myself, okay? And I'm not even a sex educator. And I'm always like, just because I feel comfortable saying pussy, fuck, dildo, ass, like. So I can only imagine assumptions people make people, about you. People think that I be hanging from the chandeliers. And what I tell people <laughs> is that I love a good listener. Like I, I am a lot of woman and I talk a lot and my body does a lot. And I'm also not going to lie for you. I want a man that's not intimidated by what my body will and won't do. And that you don't withhold pleasure or intimacy or vulnerability from me Mm -hmm. simply because it didn't do what you wanted it to do. I like Mm -hmm. men that show up to fuck me to please me. And mm. when I show up in the room to please you, I'm doing it to please you. So if you don't come for me giving you head, guess what? We don't have no attitude, no awkwardness. Like, that's not going to make the situation better. You know Agreed. what I'm saying? And like when men step in the room and they're just like, I, I really love a man to worship me because I have no problem with worshiping you. Because like at the end of the day, I only fuck with kings. That don't mean you my king, but you still want <laughs> You somebody's king. <laughs> you, you still a king. Like I still only fuck with top notch niggas. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm going to respect you and give you that king treatment because I know that you're deserving of it. And I need niggas to start fucking with us the same way. Like, you know what? I don't deal with no basic bitches. Like, you ain't my bitch, but I know you a badass bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is just, we may just be interacting for this moment or just for sex or this may not be a forever thing, but at the end of the day, while you in my hands, I'm going to make sure like, I, I respect you. I fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Nobody has a type of vulnerability anymore. No, nope. and, and that's, I, I, I think that goes back to most people are not being honest about what they want and what they want, right? Like, and they if, have no boundaries either. Like a lot of people, like what well, he said, he was treating me like this and that. If 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 at some point you knew you wanted a relationship and that person didn't and you chose to stay in it, that that's is on you. at that point that's your choice. Yeah, like that's on you. And, and like, <laughs> well, he was doing this and he was doing that. Well, guess what? People that won't fuck buddies still have love languages too, but they may not be in a relationship because they may be, you know, going through therapy. They may not be able to afford a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend reasons. right yes. now. It could be a lot of reasons that ain't got shit to do with you. But everybody makes takes everything personal as well as a lot of. First of all, it's a lot of tit for tat. So let's break it down. So women be like, oh, just tell me what you want. Men tell them what they want. And I'm not and saying you, women don't do this either. This is just the example. Yes. I use women and men. Um, and the guy be like, well, I did tell you. And you're like, well, you was laying up with me. You was buying me flowers. But you like, was the, he told well, you. I still respect you. Like, it's like, it's like you only think I really don't want a relationship if I disrespect you. But as long as I respect you and treat you still with love and care, and appreciativeness that you're still sharing your body with me in whatever way we're doing it, then that means I want a relationship. No, I still said what I said. I still respect you and I still think you the shit. That don't mean that I still, I'm ready for a relationship. Yeah. You know I, what I'm I, saying? Like, I do think so that now, is a key. Like, don't tell the truth. Now they just ghost because it's like, I already explained that to you. And it's like, they, and that's, I feel like that's why men come off as such an asshole in the beginning. Like when you first start fucking with them, like, or if you had, even if y'all talked about like just being fuck buddies, right? After y'all fuck, usually you get a different energy from them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's because they have PTSD of expectations the next day. <laughs> now they like, okay, I ain't going to call her. I hope, you know, and then if you try to reach out to them, they kind of look, they got a little bit of a wall up because they're not sure if your mind has changed because they didn't dick you down. And, and if they did, me, especially if they dick you down good. <laughs> especially if they dick you down. So for me, it's really difficult because it's like, I can give you your flowers and still move on to fuck with my day. Because what I, if it's good, I'm going to set up the next appointment and you probably won't hear from me until then. But people are so, and I tell people like, hey, I understand that like you probably be dealing with the mother hoes, but good dick is a dime a dozen. Nigga, I could throw a rock outside and find another good dick. Like Look. I'm the best fuck buddy that you're ever going to have. So don't fuck it up. Look. Because when I, if I said I didn't want a relationship, then Look, I don't. Is this a masterclass on your Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I did have a conversation on there, but I, I have to do this video about there are two videos I want to do, and I just need to find the time to do them because they're going to be a little long. Fuck buddy rules. 
right? And then the second one is that nigga did not ghost you. They did not ghost you. Because everybody acts like somebody did something to them. And it's like, they didn't. You just... You see, you turned a blind eye. It didn't work out. Yeah, it didn't work out. It ran its course. And sometimes I think, too... Um, some things just have an expiration date, and sometimes we and keep people we, are so offended by that. Yeah, like, like some should just have an expiration date, and that's girl, just what it is. I I legit just told somebody. I said, so I have you know I have my main partner, so I'm I'm polyamorous, so I have my main partner, and I've been looking for like another partner, whether that's a male or female. I don't mm-hmm. really care. I'm just looking for. I travel a lot, so it's like that being on the road companionship. I'm missing that, you know. And so it's like you know what I think I'm ready for like another partner. Well, I found somebody and I I had to tell him, I said, hey, I appreciate you being a gentleman, but this isn't going to work for me. And I got so much mouthful back. And I'm like, for a person that we haven't even been dating, we've been speaking. You know what I'm saying? We've been having some conversations, but you have not spent a motherfucking dime on me. Like you haven't made a plan on me. And after it goes past six weeks and you're getting real lucky, after it goes past six weeks, you're a pen pal. You haven't made a plan. So you know what? Hey, I think you're Are we great. like kindred DM spirits? Because I legit told this guy like three weeks ago, you're a pen, we're pen pals. Because we're pen pals. I'm okay. We like, text, we DM, we flirt. And then it's like, make a plan. As soon as you don't make, you got so long to not make a plan with me because I'm not coming to your, your couch to chill. Like- Bitch. Yeah, like coming to my couch. I'm so if I hear another fool say you want to come over, I don't know. And you. the thing, is, and you know what's wild? I wanted to give you some pussy, but the fact <laughs> that you don't even want to make it an experience, I know lo- I withdraw the yeah, pussy like, card. Okay, like I'm not turned on by that. Like I like a vibe. Like yeah, and that's the thing. I was I was having this conversation too because I do think too. You know, sometimes women we deny our own selves pleasure because you know, patriarchy, society rules, all that <laughs> shit. Like, oh, oh you're a slut, right? You know, like, <laughs> I don't care. And so I was trying to tell my friend, like, I said something to her and she's like, well, you know, you really, I can't sleep with him yet. And I'm like, you want to. But at the like, end of the day, I, you can sleep with him on the first day or the 40th day. If he don't want to fuck with you, he just gonna stop. So that's what I said. Matter. I was like, I've fucked on the first day I've met you, the first date, <laughs> the 10th date, nine months in or three months in and I'm still in the same place. So it don't matter. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's not gonna work. I tell people all the time in my, uh, you know, my ex-husband, we slept together on our first date and we still got a divorce six years later. Like if it's not meant to be, it's not gonna be meant to be. And I like, I really want for everybody to want what's for them. I'm not saying yeah. shit ain't gonna hurt, but more than anything, I want what's meant for me. Because think about how many things like we fought for, and then when we finally let it go, the bigger things that was waiting for us, and it was like, I cannot fucking believe. Or like when you do something crazy and you do it and you so scared, you wasted all this energy being scared. And when it's over, you like, damn, uh, I could have actually enjoyed that yeah. more, <laughs> but I was so fucking scared. Like yes. even me starting this business, I was like, well, I don't know, da da da. Then, then last year during, I quit my job during COVID and I, I started remember. doing this. Yes. Uh, uh, full time. And that was the biggest month I ever had. Why? Cause I actually had the energy, the full energy to do what I wanted to do. And it was like, bitch, you really kept that job for six extra months. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying like, it's don't just like, right, oh, everybody, don't y'all be writing me and talking uh-uh, about, I heard it on Booney. She told me quit my job. <laughs> that ain't what I'm saying. Yeah. But I, I, I knew at some point I was literally juggling two things that was not working. I was straddling the fence and it was like, you so scared. Like, the fuck is you scared for? What's meant to happen for you is going to happen, but you hitting roadblocks that, you, that ain't even meant for you because you won't let go. Like, and that's what we be doing with people. That's what we do with, you know, with a lot of things. Like, you never know what's on the other side of that. So I've had some partners, like, just one night stands that were better than sex in relationships because they respected me. They respected the female body and they respected consent and they respected respect. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that made a great sexual and, night. And like some of them people I never saw again. Was that the intention? No, no. but. But to your point, like, <laughs> you know, if, if it's in your, if your intention and your motive is to go in into this experience with someone else with the intent to please them, I think you're already winning, right? Like if you're not going in there selfish and like, I'm just here for my nuts. Sorry about you. <laughs> then yeah. we're going to have problems. But then I, 
I do, it is that like line that you're straddling because I always tell people too, like you're responsible for your own pleasure as well. And so, yes, when I was in my 20s, 23, 24, had I, did I fake orgasms? Yes. Cause I wanted to his ego and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do I do that shit anymore? No, like <laughs> I'm you know not what? rude about it, but I am going to speak up and say, if yeah. you're eating my pussy and you're wasting my time and I'm drying up, then I'm going to have to say, uh, sorry, sir. Can you do that? Like, I'm going to direct so you. To, yeah. Boy, like, let's, you and it's going like, to be in a fun, sexy way. Like, I'm not going to be like, nigga, yeah. the fuck you doing? Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. Yeah. But it's just I like. people too. Fake orgasms look very different from real ones. And I feel like if you can get through a couple of times where maybe you didn't come with this new partner. And like, but say like, it's good though. Like say it's still good sex, you know? And it's like, this is good. I see potential in this. I feel like sometimes women take my advice and then they, they don't fake the orgasm like the first time. Then the second time, like, it's like, he's looking for it. And it's like, I want to give him something. I tell people don't give into those few times because when that nut finally does come, he's going to also be like, damn. Like, and honestly, when you nut like that, he probably gonna be like, damn, I think other bitches been faking it with me. Because that real nut, there is nothing that compare. Y'all know damn well. Like, you know what? You know what? I got to experiment. Whoever the fuck is listening to this, go watch your partner masturbate. Go watch your partner masturbate. I, first of all, I love mutual masturbation. But the truth Me is, too. a lot of people don't want to masturbate in front of their partner because their partner is going to know you've been faking it. They're going to know you've been faking it as soon as they watch you fuck yourself. Yeah. I so, love it too. It's you. I usually, if I, if possible, cause it's not always possible. Cause sometimes you just want fuck, but yeah. if possible, if I, the experience <laughs> is going right, I do try to do mutual masturbation first. If not, then very early on, if there is going to be a sexual career with this person, then I will try to do that early on because yeah. So you know, one, two, you especially say. watching a guy jerk his dick. You, you like you mentioned earlier the some guy like I remember I was with this one guy he had the most and it was like he was it was almost like he was didn't like touching his dick and it was like like if this barely touching like, it yeah. yeah so I'm like damn I'm sitting here doing guac guac three thousand but he just likes a very light barely touch touching right it, yes. It's like, think about like a feather on your skin or somebody like brushing against your nipples and things like that. I think that we forget that the dick mm-hmm. has those sensitive areas too. So like even in like my math master class, I teach people like, okay, everything I teach you has a spectrum. So if I teach it to you like this, don't be one of the people that's like, this is what she said, do this, how I do it. No, let's use our mind and understand that we can go less or we can go more. I'm gonna just give you the middle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, even when you jack in a dick and you use like, the nubs like the the finger your fingertips use that to feel the veins like when you're doing it like almost like you're playing like the harp or something like using <laughs> your fingers to you know to feel it and when you do that your hand can't also be gripped really tight like gripped. sometimes yeah. you really jerking the chicken you know what i'm saying and i knew a dude that he if you just stroked his dick lightly he just nut he's like it feels so good it's literally just like when somebody rub your clit or rub your nipples or you know what i'm saying like lick your ear we forget about those sensitive things especially with men but they got it too they have it too and don't be afraid to ask when you just said that like he he was very light and he he liked to he could not from that Mm -hmm. i remember too like I've had partners when you're sucking their dick, they want the whole full super head experience with the spit and all the noises. <laughs> and you got to fucking put on a show and not, you know, choke and dip, die, down. right? You know? Okay. And then down. you have people who, like this one guy I was with, he was like, can you, that spit, it was just, it was I too hate much. spit rolling down. He, and I hate like, it too. So ooh. I was so happy when he was like, don't do it. I was like, thank you. <laughs> and see, that's the, one of the beauties of actually having that conversation because you never know. Like, I know that for sure I've had somebody like, I don't know why I thought he liked spit, but I did. So maybe it was just a miscommunication. Because generally I ask people while I'm sucking their dick, hey, how do you like your dick suck? Um and when he said he didn't like all that spit, I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you. Because you see, I keep stopping to do this. And he was like, oh, it's OK, babe. And it was like so cute. <laughs> and it made it made his dick harder. Yeah. And you don't even realize how much men don't even like penis holders don't really express what they want in the bedroom. Like, I feel like they don't get me wrong. Yes, women fake nuts. And yes, women are least satisfied. But just because men catch a nut doesn't mean that they're very satisfied either. And that's what the world is forgetting. Like when I tell you I'm an equal opportunity shit talker, like ladies, fellas, anybody, turtles, whatever, anybody can get ah. it. I'm going to tell you where 
we can do better. And the thing is, is nobody really asks men what you want. It's like as they long don't. as they nut, we they act like it's cool. You know what I'm like? Everybody and men acts fake like it's cool. It too. Men fake oh, they it do. Too. I'll never forget when that man was like, Yeah, I definitely spit on this girl back. And I was like, Oh, <gasps> <laughs> I was. I, he was like, man. Sometimes you got to like jerk that leg and you spit on their back. And I'm like, how much spit? Nigga? Like, you just had spit ready? Like, I am like, bored. And now I'm like, has a man ever man spit, spit on my back? On my back? <laughs> like, and, and then, and then you realize how how men probably think you probably like ain't nobody ever did that to me. And then when men say it though, we be like, what do you mean? So it's like I never. When you talk about like confidence in the bedroom, the confidence that I love in the bedroom is that confidence. Like it doesn't matter what happened. Like I'm here because I want to fuck with you. Like that's a level of confidence. Not that confidence. Like no, nah, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Like I know what you like. Like I don't like that. I hear you. That's cockiness. I like the confidence where you're so confident that you can ask me what I want. You're so confident that you'll adjust when I say I want something different. Yes. You're so confident that your dick ain't even getting hard when I say, "Oh, baby, I didn't come." Or Okay, pull out that toy. And, and what do, the one I, you was talking about? Like, that's some real ass confidence to me. Yeah, we definitely focus too much on if you orgasm, that's the only qualify, qualifier that the sex was good as well. Because yeah. there have been times mm-hmm. when I've had a good, it, the shit was good, but I, it just didn't happen for me. And, and so um, yeah, so I, I'm okay with that. And I, I've had to reassure some partners. Because, you know, they feel like if you don't come, then it was bad. But I'm like, no, we had, it was a good time. <laughs> no, it was <laughs> like, a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want it to happen like this forever. I hope we figure it out at some yeah, point. But, but no, I would definitely make reservations again. Yeah, I, I would. would def- yeah. Like, but you know what's my favorite thing? I like when they pull out a toy when they know you didn't have it. Like, without being told. I've only had one person do this. You sure literally, you can go back and marry him? Literally one person. And I was stunned like it's so beautiful stunned stunned i don't think i don't think anybody realizes it doesn't matter how you gave her the nut if you give her the nut it's still work she didn't have to do you know i fucked with somebody once and i think he knew his dick don't get hard like that for whatever reason like i don't know maybe he was on diabetes medicine i don't know but what i do know is that he was very attentive otherwise to make sure I knew that he was into it. Like he didn't seem phased by it. And he was so prepared early on to say, Oh, can you show me which toys you got? Like da 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 da. And I could just tell it was just one of those things where he didn't have to say anything, but he filled the gap so well that I didn't, I didn't even care that we didn't use his dick that much. Like, because when I finally did come that got his dick super hard and it was like, okay, there we go. But it just lasted for a very short sure. amount of time. And so like, yeah, eventually you'll miss, you'll want that, but it was so great. It was actually one of the, I ain't going to say like one of, it ain't my mouth, <laughs> but it was definitely. It's a memorable I, experience. You know what's wild is because it's like technically the dick report is an A plus, but I'd be like, oh, his, you know, his dick was small and it didn't stay hard very long. Like it was hard to, I mean, that's the truth, but it was still great. Like I've had a lot of good sex with small dicks. They put in more effort. I do but think also, his was small and it, and it wasn't getting hard, so he kind of had a dumb yeah, I was about to say, that, you know, yeah. I don't mind. I mean, obviously, I like a dick that makes me feel full. Um, but I will say I've had um, an average and below average penis. I actually have a below average penis that is on my Mount Rushmore. I love that for him. Yeah, so... Represent. Like, yeah. it really doesn't matter, you guys. Like, it's it's not... He it's not about you, like it's just it's a, not it's experience, yeah. Like it, it is every single time with him, even the first time we had, like I remember I did not come, but I was just like, Oh shit, like yeah. that was all right. Just, I'm I'm coming back. He's like, I'm making a reservation to come back. I'm making another reservation, yeah, a follow-up. He, I'm making yeah, a follow-up. He was definitely the, I do definitely have um the smallest dick I ever fucked with is definitely on my Mount Rushmore. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The yeah. smallest one I've ever fucked with. Definitely Mount Rushmore. Now, only thing that got me with him is that, like, he was act. I, I don't know if he knew it was small. Oh. That part always, was a little awkward. I just I thought that you felt knew. like men, men know if they have a big dick or a small dick, right? Like, I feel like it's people in the middle who don't know. Yeah, who, and they're not sure. They're like, oh, yeah, they're like, I don't know. But but I felt like the, the biggest one dick I've had, he knew. 
because I, I think it was just so it was so stunning <laughs> that he got that reaction probably every time he took his pants down. So that nigga knew he, he had probably a big like, dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, the small one, that's the only thing that was wrong. He didn't know his dick was small. But mostly everybody else I fucked with, they knew their dick was small. And I think that the reason that it was still great sex too, not just because they came prepared, like they knew what they were doing, but also my reaction as well. I am not ignorant to the point where I think that, oh, if it's small, I'm disappointed. I don't know until we have the sex. And that's the, a lot of women... Just like they show that gas when it's big, they also make involuntary faces yeah. when it's small. And it's like, bitch, you think you help in a motherfucking situation? What the fuck? What? Yeah. I will what? say I have had to learn that. You can't do that. I, that was something I did have to learn because I do show expression on my face. And so oh, I, I think the first time I get an F for that, the first time I encountered one, it was definitely an F because I was like, like you know, like shit. Oh my god! <laughs> but I have I'm such a in a better place because. And now you have some good small dick, so you also know you can't. Yeah, so now I'm like I'm not like oh it's not automatically like womp womp. So I'm not gonna lie to you. I be ju- like I feel like I could look at a dude and tell like how good his dick is and how big it is just when just looking at him. Look, and before we wrap up, like <laughs> I think everybody always all women always be like I want a six foot. Or nigga, and those be the ones. <laughs> Where they at? Where is that now, baby now, dicks? Now, I'll, I'll say this though: it's always affected. Now, if he, if he, if he, there's always outliers. Yes. Always outliers. Um, they could be tall. I feel like when they, you know what? This needs to be a Patreon episode because what I'm about to say, I don't want nobody to take it out of context. So I'm gonna just shut up. Okay, well, look, why I'm you're shutting it. up? I'm gonna just shut up because somebody's gonna be like, "You trying to say?" All the dark skinned dudes got big dicks. All the light skinned dudes got big dicks. Well, y'all know damn well that ain't what I'm saying. Somebody gonna hear it, think I'm talking about them, and they're gonna be like, you know what? I don't like this bitch. So I'm gonna just, you know, be quiet. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna. But I'm just saying, you know what I'm talking about, though. You know what I'm talking about. Girls Look, I'm not know. gonna confirm or deny, but you know I'm... <laughs> what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Girls know. Girls you, know. That's how you know, like, an inexperienced woman and a sexually experienced woman because she don't get excited. First of all, the finest, the finest me in the world all right catch us on the next episode welcome to season 10 <laughs> baby look okay so we're gonna go to the breakdown <laughs> i'm gonna say one word you're gonna say the first thing that comes to mind oh my goodness i forgot it, all about this it oh could be a God. sound see you forgot it could be a sound it could be a <laughs> phrase whatever you want to say and we're gonna go from there i'm gonna have to add a one really quickly okay you ain't shit, you ain't shit. <laughs> first one black women oh Ass eating. We didn't even get there, but ass eating. Do that. Do that. Yeah. Do that. Exploration. Journey. Confidence. Must have. Drake. Light skin. (laughs) (laughs) Orgasms. Again. (laughs) Good pussy. Is wet. <laughs> and last one, masturbation. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Girl, I wish I would have said, uh, good pussy don't never get tired, but I'm just not there witty. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it'd be hard when it's on the spot. Look, I know, right? That's why I'm like, why are you playing with me? <laughs> <laughs> so if you could tell everyone where they can follow you on the internet, where they can shop your store and get good information about any future events. Absolutely. So find me on Instagram, um, at sexual essentials, all one word. Um, and my Patreon, all my stuff is in the link in my bio there. Um, my Patreon is, we have $10 ones, $15 ones, and they, um, the $15 is the one I like because it comes with more than classes. You know, it has the live demos and the extras, you know, um, interviews, behind the scenes, like sex toy reviews. You get to hear my bedroom hotel. So that way you can live vicariously through me and figure out what you want to try out, you know, um, what worked for me, what didn't, hearing about, you know, what's going on with my relationship, um, all of that fire ass shit. Um, on Patreon, you can go to there, type in sexual essentials, press enter, just click the link in my bio. And my website is www.thesexualessentials.com. And on there, you can find my master class. Ooh, 
Oh, child. <laughs> my master class, <laughs> um, mouth master class, dick riding 101, um, uh, masturbation and squirting 101. So um, I teach everything. So the everybody always asks too, and I'm going to just get this out the way, which one should we get? They're different things. The master classes go for those topics that they're not short and sweet. It mm -hmm. takes me over an hour to teach those in depth and you know, those are separate. And the Patreon, you have access to all 150 of those class plus classes as long as you're a member. So, oh, you also get added to my Instagram close friends. So, um, I want incentives. You know, gotta, gotta, gotta pay these bills, keep these lights on. Okay. I know. Um, so thank you for having me back. Congratulations on Bless, season of fucking 10. Like, I don't even you know, know how. Like, how did we get so here? Fast. Where did the time so go? Fast. But look, yeah, thank you for being a Boonie All-Star. I should make y'all like t-shirts or something. <laughs> oh, you know, get, whatever you do, because you're so witty and always doing something <laughs> that's, that's nice. You have like, a meet and greet or something. Yeah. Um, look, so yes. I can't I want to see you at the, net art, the art event, the next No, I definitely, okay? like, next one I'm there. I was looking at the calendar like, oh, I don't think I'll be able to make it, but uh <laughs> but next one, I'm definitely there because I definitely have to meet you in person. So yes, I know, right? All of my little friends that I met on the internet, my little friends, <laughs> is the parents say, I'm like these folks. These are some great people. Like <laughs> I, I, I folks with the internet for that. Um, yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for having me back. I hope y'all have had a great time hearing this. Make sure you go back and listen to the first episode. Yes, yeah, so it'll be linked okay. as episode 124. How come? Uh, <laughs> there you go so <laughs> go back run this one now that you've listened to this and be sure to support uh, sexual essentials across the internet all right so bye all girl right. bye all right guys that is it for this week's episode i want to thank our guest samaya of sexual essentials be sure to support her patreon be sure to support her upcoming events the pictures from her last event are over on her page they look dope as fuck so be sure to support her in any way that you can also if you want to have some me time some masturbation get to learn you can also support our sponsor dane products use the code boonie to save 10 percent on your entire order all right and um one last thing i do want to say Last week's episode, we introduced a new segment that will be featured in some episodes. If you would like your confession, your anonymous confession to be featured, you can shoot that on over uh, to the booniebreakdown.com backslash boonies confessional. And you can submit it there anonymously or you can always shoot an email. But we have some good ones coming in that will be featured in future episodes, ones that are not as long. All right, guys. So that is is everything for me and if you enjoyed this episode i encourage you to listen subscribe to the podcast on apple Podcasts, spotify amazon music stitcher google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, radio youtube or any app that you listen to your favorites on don't forget to leave those five star reviews too you might just hear your review on the next episode follow us on all social media we're even on pinterest tiktok at the booty breakdown share this episode with those you love those you fucking hate i don't make these pretty images for nothing okay have a dope ass week stay healthy safe and sane guys really 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 especially our crew down in the gulf coast we're praying for you as you weather this hurricane thank you for listening and remember the ratchet in me always honors the ratchet in you home i stay until next time